Good morning. Yeah, good afternoon. Everybody doing all right? Thanks for coming out. Um, How are you? Oh, good. Happy. You know, it's, uh, you know, another, you know, this is an exciting day for young men and uh, a, a chance for them is uh, to fulfill their dream. Um, something they've worked extremely hard for. Obviously, it's not a large signing class here, but, uh, you know, the, this class, uh, we're very confident are going to um, fit well into our program. And as we continue with, with the younger players here that, that are on this list to, to, to fit into our culture and, and, and help us in years to come. And uh, so, uh, again, there'll be more in the second signing and, and, and things as we work through. But uh, uh, once again, uh, you know, for us to, you know, the timing, we've talked about that every week in here when we arrived and, and, and for, a, for the 22 class, it, you know, that, that provided some challenges. And, uh, but uh, all in all, we're very pleased with where that's at. So I'll just open up for questions. Got microphones on both sides here. When you sign uh, Ethan as, as one of your guys mm -hmm. here in this class, could you talk through the process of deciding to, to pick up Ethan and sign a quarterback uh, in this class? Um, discuss that yeah um yeah you know we we have these talks all the time i think when you look at it and uh obviously the importance of the position and and really uh um you know today's uh atmosphere of of a climate of of, of college football and what happens you, you know the depth that you need you, you saw what happened to us in in the uh kansas state game and and in injuries and that but um um also uh you know, uh, Miles Kendrick will not be back. Conrad Hawley will not be back. And and when we knew those things were transpiring, we, we knew around that time that, uh, um, you know, a quarterback was going to be needed in this class. So that, that's probably changed late, you know, in later part of the season. And just what did you like about Ethan specifically? Uh, about what well, you know, we had we we'd evaluated him while we we're at Buffalo. Uh, Coach Zabrowski's always liked him, stayed in contact with him. Uh, tall, rangy, can run the ball as well, but he's got a strong arm. Uh, very mature young man, that uh, leader, um, and uh, just the whole package that we thought that was going to fit into our system. And uh, you know, he was one that was going to. If we were going that route, that was, uh, um, you know, what Jim, where Jim wanted to go from the start. And so, I guess you go the high school route instead of the transfer route, at least at, at this point. I guess mm -hmm. why that instead of me bringing a, a more veteran guy, especially with Miles. I think you know the around. answer to that. Okay, I, we're very, you know, I, I, you know, not to be rude. I mean, we're we're pleased with the quarterbacks, the older quarterbacks that are here, and the play of Jalen Daniels late in the season. Very inspiring, but and again we saw flashes of, of what Jason Bean can do as well. So um, right now at this point, um, that, that that's what we uh, want to go, and and we know we have a lot of work to do yet um, holistically as a program and and offensively, and uh, you know, uh, but again, um, we are highly encouraged and inspired by our play late in the year and what what we can do with those guys, and and that's where we want to be. No, so I know you can only talk about the signees that are on the, the paper here, but mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a couple offensive linemen that you signed. I guess there's more potentially coming uh, in the in the coming weeks. They so just yeah. How do you feel about the guys you brought on and just that focus on that position? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, James Livingston's young man that came came on campus unofficially this summer, and you know we we're highly impressed with him. First team All State player, um, you know. Uh, you know, gave us that side. Then we had a chance to go watch him play. He committed during the summer, and uh, but Andy Kolnick even went up, watched him, and and just you know, we we're very impressed again with his for a man that size, how he moved his feet, his physicality. Um, you know, uh, and you know, he came back here in December. Um, just a highly impressive young man. Again, that's going to fit what what we want to do in our inside outside zone scheme. So, um, you know, excited about him, Joey Baker. Um, you know, uh, comes from an excellent football program. Again, he was here during the summer on, on an official visit, committed during that time, um, came back again. Um, comes from an athletic and a football family, which I, th you know, I think is going to be very important as well sometimes where, you know, he, he, you know, he gets it. His, his father coached many years in the, uh, 
in college football, but also coaching the NFL. Um, last coaching with the Cowboys. His grandfather, Joe Baker, was uh, athletic director um, for many years in college athletics at the small college level. In fact, he was the uh, athletic director at Wisconsin Lacrosse while I was at Whitewater. Um, so um, great family. Um, really excited about him as well and his maturity and because I know he's been around uh, the game the way he has and again from from the team uh, his high school program you know finished 14 and one um, you know the the grind and the length of a college season and all those things I think when you put in some of those intangibles I know he's going to be a great addition Hey, how, how different is this recruiting cycle just from what you're used to? Just, I mean, especially with like the very, transfer portal options and that kind of changing the numbers. Very different, very different. Um, there's so much going on. And I, I guess, uh, again, um, I've also been doing exit media or end of the year meetings with our players here the last three days. So I apologize if sometimes a little, a lot of different thoughts going through my head. and. Um, I really need to, to, to thank our recruiting staff and department, you know, uh, all those people kind of in the other wing there because um, you're referring to the portal and other things. And uh, to say things are very fluid and moving in a lot of different directions, and they still are. And, and for us to, um, and they were on top of it all the time. And uh, it's different in so many ways, um, different than then, um, you know, when, you know, there's coaching changes. Uh, all over the country that does it on uh, that that always has it but now you throw in the portal component um it's uh it's it's the new world we live in and it's been highly different and i think you'll see that across the country today with with uh, a lot of different ways uh signing classes uh numbers are how how will the math kind of work for this class like by the time it's done you know in a couple of months how how many will you be bringing on total that's good that's um that'll be a little fluid but i'm sorry um i guess the one thing i i wanted to also kind of answer that a little bit is when you say this class i think part of this class is some guys you saw this fall because of some of the numbers we had to use back based on some of the attrition so I think Mike Nowitzki is a pretty good member of this class. I think Rich Miller is a big addition to this class. Uh, Trevor Wilson, Michael Ford. So I think this recruiting class already has paid some dividends for this program. And I could go on with Jason Bean. And, you know, Eddie Wilson and, and Ron McGee added some, some depth to this team. So those guys, when you say those numbers shaking out, I'm giving you some of those numbers already. So you could see. And then there's parts of, of new rules of, that you can gain a few back. So that's why I say it's still fluid. And then we have to decide, you know, how we're going to use some of those holistically. And if there's any other legislation, that'll change along the way. That, as we know, we've still um, have, have battled, uh, um, you know, our numbers to, to that 85, where we want that 85 always to be. Do you have a sense of how many high school guys you might end up with? Not completely part? yet, no. Okay, I, I, I don't. There could be a few more there, but yeah. You mentioned the 85. How, how close can you guys get to 85 next year? What's it? I think we can. Like? We'll be. I, I think we have a chance to be there. Yes. And and I guess holistically, and I say that, and you know, we could we could we could put a lot of people to sleep on this <laughs> subject. But but those of you that kind of really are kind of into that a little bit, and and days if we start using these words, that sometimes I, I make them explain it to me a couple times. But it also would depend on how much you know if we're in the business of of spending some of. The, the 23 class and and we want to be very very cautious with that as well but at the same time addressing what we need to because uh you know that's that's a that's a class especially locally that we've been able to to build relationships and 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 really start analyzing and looking forward to continuing that and we want to make sure as we do that that we can we can do those things so um 
you know, there's, I, I don't know what, I'm sure somebody, uh, John, will break down um, what percentage would, will be high school signees, how many will be junior college in that across the country and, and where, where the makeup is and how that compares. Um, the other part that's going to be really interesting is, you know, when they break those numbers down, it used to be like 93% were signing on this day. Well, I don't know if that's really going to be the case based on how people use any and any of their transfers in, in their scholarship announce or uh, you know all those things. So it's gonna be interesting. I I think for us though, um, it's important as we go through. And it's not offense to the people that, that do that for a living or, or any of those things we respect those is that our main focus has to be that we make our football team better. Better for the short term, better for the long term. And what do I mean by that is, is we have to create more situations of internal competition each and every day to get everybody to their, to their highest potential and, and, and reach that. So when we look at that and we're looking at where we're unbalanced and we, we inherited a, a situation where we're highly imbalanced in offense and defensive scholarships. We have some positions that are highly over scholarship based on a breakdown, not, not people's abilities. It's just where, where you want them that. And that causes death problems at times. So we want to get ourselves in the best position moving forward. And, and we believe that uh, we are well on our way to do that. Following up on that, were, because of the timing and, and because of what you just talked about there, were, were you able to, to worry about need as much or did you have to worry about the numbers just as much? Or how did you, I guess, big picture approach your, your attack in this class? When you say timing, our arrival, you know, won't you be glad when we don't have to talk about that anymore like as much? Years, yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, some of each, you know, we, but, but again, the, the other component for us, um, just to be as transparent as I can is, you know, so many people, are, it, this is moving so fast these days with high school players and offers and that. Well, it's hard to offer. It was hard to do a lot in the 22 class when you haven't coached the, the, your current team and how it was going to fit us. So that was challenging along the way. And then as you evolve through this season, certain guys start elevating their game and they're progressing like, yeah, well, here we see that. Or this guy's coming, or this one, or this area is now is is not as quite as deep as we had hoped and we need, and so those were, you know, so it's always kind of moving, and it and it probably will be that way for a while, and I think the things that um, uh, again to kind of answer some of these uh, just holistically on recruiting is, you know, Daniel Burke gave me uh, one of our uh, game notes one week, and it talked about the amount of starts that another another school had had. And I asked them to do ours. And we're like, it was almost half, maybe 60%. And what, and what today's transfer portal and other things are doing is people can recruit for depth and, and, and get more experience within the, that, that too deep that gets handed to you every week and stay as an older veteran football team. And as you know, we're the youngest Power 5 football team in the country. So solely just adding more high school players, I don't know what's going to be in, the, in, in this changing landscape. This is a different way of college football than when I stood in front of you on, on May 3rd and talked about recruiting. It is vastly changed. And uh, we have to be able to adapt in many different ways with it. Were, were you here long enough? Was that enough of a season to, to truly identify need? And, and did you do it? Did you, did you address it? Are you success, satisfied with it? In um, I guess I'll give ourselves a little bit more. We, you know, we'd like to see a little more in the spring because part of that has to do with understanding and implementing of what we're going to do and how, how the current players are doing that and where we need more help. Um, some of that has to do with health. Sometimes there are some players that, uh, you know, didn't even partake this year really in anything. Um, but, yeah, it gave us a good, a, a good starting point. Um, and we knew through some schematic changes that we we're going to be light in some areas, and, and we've got to find ways to catch that back up. I, I think it's, it was uh, um, a good start, but I think we'll feel better um, 
after spring as we really head into the summer part of the recruiting of the 23 class. So that, that, that part's exciting. Um, we're, we're excited about any way that we can prove our football team. And that's internally right now. And we've had some great meetings the last two and a half days and, and getting on the same page. And, and, and when I say and I'm, I'm kind of going slightly off what you're asking, then you can bring me back to the portal type things. But uh, um, is, you know, we had a chance with Matt Gildersleeve, our strength coach, and myself sitting in all these. And I think we're in the 70s now with the meetings of, of 95 players is um, our stage our nutritionist sits in, the position coach sits in, and we do a holistic type meeting with them. And we, again, we all get on it because we're telling them how we see them and they give feedback and it gives us a great opportunity as we head towards um, winter conditioning. So with that, that part of our roster is gonna get better. And yeah, I, I think um, for a program like us and where we're at, they're, they're, and, and I just said, Everybody's kind of involved in this now. Yeah, we, we have to be excited about some things. Um, I've always tried to be cautious, whether it be these names that we just mentioned or anyone else, because as we know, you don't, you, you have to wait to see when they get here. And I want to make sure it's fair to them. But, um, you know, from what we say, what we expect, what we want them to do. Um, yeah, I'm excited about where, where, where we're heading, just like I've always been, and uh, hopefully I can be more specific in a month or so. Along with that, you, you mentioned how things have completely changed from May. It seems like you guys were prepared as a staff to meet that. Can you speak to that, like your whole staff, uh, recruiting staff being ready to go out and potentially look at transfer portal kids, get in early on them? I mean, because again, this is something that maybe a year ago staff didn't even deal with. You kind of had to. Do it on the floor. Well, as it as information and everybody um, that covers recruiting and and does thing is always looking, um, there's always breaking news and all. But as that goes, we're evaluating everything that can come across. So, as as I said earlier, we knew the 22 class would be slow going to start because of our late arrival that way and, and as it kind of continued to go. And, and then as we saw opportunities after evaluating our, some of our games, okay, this is where we could use a little more um, you know, experience and things like that. So yeah, those things started to pick up in what we were um, you know, looking at and, and those uh, evaluations and relationships were starting and, and as you guys probably know, the, some of them were on campus and, and even attended, you know, late games in the season. And last one for me, how much do you think the last three weeks helped you um, with potential transfer portal guys or guys that are coming in with experience to say this is where the program? Last three, last three weeks of the season. Uh, immensely. I, I think it, it definitely helped. I, I would, I would, I would I, again. Um, it's interesting, um, it's just personal opinion, that you know, when you deal sometimes with players that are in the portal or something like that, I, I think uh, the maturity of maybe, depending on how long, how long they've been in college is definitely different. I think it's definitely different also their set of, uh, of criteria of what they're looking for. It's not always the biggest stadium and the most uniform combinations and, and what kind of photo shoot they get. It's more about, I guess I'll use the word substance. Is where, where do I fit in? Who am I fitting in with? What's it more about? And is it gonna help me get to my next goal? And, and that, that part is, and um, you know, I think the substance and genuineness and thoroughness and the integrity part, I think we'll, we'll be able to hold up just well with that. And I'm excited about that part. Um, the last few games of the year, um, yes. And not just there, it was with high school as well moving forward. Um, I was in Dallas right away. Um, 
you know, the first day out. And the thing that I was so highly impressed with is the amount of high school coaches that talked about those games late in the season, but had watched the games and watched and they were, and I really want to credit our, our players and assistant coaches is because they talked about how hard our players were playing. And again, as a, as a head coach, that's fulfilling because especially where we were rec record wise. And sometimes when you take a little bit step back and you're doing a lot of traveling and you're sitting on a plane and you're, and you're looking at it and you're kind of going, you know, when you're one in seven, there's a lot of ways for a lot of people not, not to show up, not to play as hard and be on their own agenda. And for us to get a win in Austin and then to keep playing as hard is definitely things that not only internally are gonna help us, but it's gonna help us recruiting this year and down the road, and that's, that's exciting. John? Yeah, Lance, with the portal, it, this almost feels like different phases of recruiting. You're going to have when they show up, possibly in January. Then you've got the late signing day in February. And then you guys could be hosting and talking about recruits in March, April, and May, can't you? Hosting? Now, I, we're, we wouldn't be in a contact period. Um, but there could be, yeah, there's, there's other ways that you can go through things. I think that's my recruiting count. I got to look back. I'm just, no, we just went dead. <laughs> but yeah, um, they've talked about, and I've seen some little things about, should they push this day back? And, you know, when, when they say recruiting never stops, um, it truly won't, it isn't and won't. I would just ask who's ever making those statements to think of, all the families and wives and children that uh, what that'll affect uh, their holiday season and uh, that's kind of uh, not that it doesn't not that I know sometimes but um, yeah it's a uh, yeah it's as they say it's free agency and a lot of other things and we're we're definitely in a a new new wave of uh, operating and it'll be that way it's going to be that way, and um, you know, hopefully, it it finds its settling point in some ways because you see information where, what was it? Seventy-five percent of the guys that are FBS players in the portal haven't found a home yet. Now that number's probably a little low because people aren't announcing and things like that. But there's going to be a lot of lot lot of players. Um, that that are gonna have struggle finding the the rest of the, their their college playing days, let alone education. Yeah, hey, Lance, uh, you you uh you signed Mason, a, a local guy, and I think he said that the decision is that he's gonna gray shirt. Is why was that the best route um for for Mason in this class? That I think I can. Am I good on that? Um, I'm trying to figure out all those different ones. Yeah, we're excited about about Mason Ellis and 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 where that's at, and obviously to have someone right here from the state of Kansas. And um, when we looked at our holistic numbers, that gave us the best flexibility for him and uh, for our future as well. And and it really was I really admire his family and 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 Mason because as they continued to look at the situations we talked about. The good thing is that Mason entered high school or, or grade, you know, school early. He's 17 years old. He doesn't turn 18 until July. So for holistically for his development, it even made more sense. So um, that's that, that's kind of where it, it kept coming all together. And as when we presented that option for him, that was our best way. Um, to uh, to present to get him in this program and and make it make it all work. Now, all right. thanks everyone. All right, thank you. Thanks, Lance. Thanks. Hey, Nicky's up the up the hill there in the parking lot.